What's up, y'all? This Q. We're here at Bloodline Dynasty, and tonight's video is all about how to become a professional tattoo artist. All right, y'all. So tonight's video is all about becoming a tattoo artist. Now, in general, it's two different ways you're going to become a tattoo artist. One way is you will be a self-taught artist or you will go up underneath a traditional apprenticeship. So tonight I'm going to break down the pros and cons of both ways. Then I'm going to talk about my preferred method and give you a step-by-step -step breakdown of everything you pretty much going to need to do when it comes to going from being a regular artist to being a professional tattoo artist. So we're about to get right into it. Now, the first path that we're going to talk about is the self-taught artist. Now, myself and a lot of the other artists I know went this route. And right now, I'm going to go over some of the pros and cons of going the self-taught way. So, as you can see, some of the pros of going the self-taught way is you get to start fast. You get to make money immediately. And there's no restrictions. On the con side, there's a slower learning curve. You're going to get slower growth. And it can be illegal at times. All right, so the very best thing about starting off as a self-taught artist is you get to start immediately. You get to buy your kit. You get to plug it in and you get to start tattooing your friends or family without any wait time, which means you get to put money in your pocket faster. A lot of traditional uh, apprenticeships will cause you to have to wait for months at a time or years before you can even touch somebody with a needle. So off rip, if you're trying to make money and you don't have the ability to go a traditional apprenticeship route and you don't have the resources to be able to do that, going a self-taught way and just starting immediately might be the better option for you. On the downside, it can be illegal because you have to have paperwork and be tattooing in a certain establishment for it to be technically legal. Um, and you're going to have a slower learning curve. You're not going to have an experienced artist behind you with years of knowledge who can tell you the do's and don'ts when you're coming out of the gate. So you're going to tend to make a lot more mistakes on your clients and you're going to have to just learn in a much slower way. Now, for the first three years of my career, I was technically a self-taught artist. I had been getting tattooed for a long time, and I had been questioning my artists about trying to learn. And I had traveled around to a couple of different tattoo shops to try to get in with an apprenticeship because I really didn't know anything about what I was doing. But it's not always easy to get a traditional apprenticeship with artists. Even if you do have a relationship with your tattoo artist, you got to understand that an apprenticeship takes a lot of time out of the day for them to be able to sit down and properly teach you the ins and outs of the tattoo industry. So first off, a person is going to want to have some kind of personal relationship with you or they're going to be charging you some kind of money when it comes down to trying to learn. Going a self-taught route at that point in time was awesome for me because I had another job. I had twin girls on the way. So I just needed to be able to make money as fast as possible. And going that route, as soon as I tattooed myself, I was able to make my own business and I started tattooing out of my apartment. Every day of the week, I had the apartment full of people who wanted to get tattooed and I was able to bank a lot of cash. On the downside, yes, my tattoos were shitty for the first three years of me tattooing because I had no coaching. And as much as I wanted it, I had to wait till the time was right and I had to wait until there was somebody willing to accept me in my proper place and I did that so now we're gonna go into the pros and cons of an apprenticeship so like I said when you go the traditional apprenticeship route the biggest key and the biggest plus side of it is that you get to learn fast it's legal and you're getting daily guidance from an artist who has much more experience than you do on the cons you're gonna be much slower to start tattooing you got to do some kind of dirty work most of the time in an apprenticeship and you're not going to be making no money or artists might even charge you money to be teaching you during an apprenticeship state. 
All right, y'all. So in my opinion, this is the very best way to go about trying to become a tattoo artist because you're going to learn from somebody who's much more experienced than you are. They're going to be able to lead you to the right path and you're going to be able to avoid a lot of pitfalls that people who are self-taught are going to have to go through. It's just no way around it. Regardless of how many seminars you watch, how many books you read, uh, one-on-one experience is always going to beat it. So... In my personal case, I didn't get an apprenticeship with a real tattoo artist until I was about three years in. And the lady who owned the shop that I was going to um, gave me a spot in the shop because she had seen that my work was getting better. And from then on, she was willing to critique all of my work from then out. And that was the best thing could have ever happened to me. Everything that I would post online, any mistakes that she would see, she would call it out right there in front of my clients. And I would welcome it. A lot of my clients would be offended, but I needed to learn these things so that I can continue to build my skill level up. So the first thing that you're going to want to think about is anybody who you're going to apprentice under needs to be somebody who you admire. It doesn't matter as far as how they rank in the tattoo industry unless that matters to you. So if they have a higher skill level than you do, it's a good chance you're going to be able to learn something from them. But at the end of the day, you need to model yourself after an artist who you truly admire, meaning you like their artwork, you like their business model, and you like their personality. All these things need to mesh because this is a very intricate process and you need to be learning from somebody who you connect with in an intimate way. So... When I take an apprentice, I always put them through the same process from the ground up to get them running at the best optimum efficiency before I put them out on the floor. And this process always begins on paper. I want to see how artistically advanced an artist is. Sometimes people come in with very detailed portfolios, very advanced portfolios. I'm able to look at what they can do and immediately put them to the next step. Some people come in and they might be good artists, but their technical skills might not really be up to par enough to be able to take them into the next step. It's important to understand that as a tattoo artist, you're still an artist first and foremost. So your skills on paper are what's gonna end up translating over to skin. If on paper you're a subpar artist, it's a good chance that you're going to be a subpar tattoo artist as well. Now, this doesn't go in the opposite direction at all. There are a lot of artists out here who are fantastic on paper, and that doesn't necessarily transfer over to skin. But you definitely can't be an all the way shitty artist and be a great tattoo artist. You see what I'm saying? You could be a great artist and a shitty tattoo artist, but you can't be a shitty artist and a great tattoo artist. It just doesn't work that way. You got to at least have certain basic artistic skills to be able to get the ball rolling. Now, it's important that you understand the people who tend to win at this are the people who are the most passionate about it. You've got a lot of guys out here who are tattoo artists, who work in shops, own shops, but art might not have necessarily been their whole passion their whole life me in my case art has always been my passion i wasn't an athlete i wasn't a singer i wasn't a dancer every waking moment of my life was spent doing art when i wasn't supposed to necessarily be doing it i was doing art so it's an easy transition for me to go over to tattooing because all i had to really learn how to do was to use the needle and learn about the canvas, which is extremely different than any other artistic medium canvas you're pretty much going to be using. So going from being a regular artist to being a tattoo artist is a breeze to me. Now, some people are extremely artistically passionate, but their technical skill might not have been there because of whatever reason that might be. Maybe they didn't have enough time to practice or take the time to practice. Maybe they didn't have the proper education coming up to be able to teach them some of the things that will make them more advanced. But everybody has their own reasoning for being at whatever skill level that they're at. 
in my opinion it's very important for you to have a particular set of skills they don't need to be super well developed but they have to be at a particular base level before you can go out here and really call yourself a professional tattoo artist when you get to that professional tattoo artist stage yes there are going to be several stages of that but to get the ball rolling and get out here and start tattooing people on a professional level you pretty much just need to have clean lines smooth shading and solid coloring and if you can't do that on paper it's no way in hell you're going to be able to do it on skin so what i do is i will take artists through some traditional drills that i got that pretty much get you from a to z very fast um, i take you through different lining drills once you can do a clean line a very basic clean line then we go on to different shading techniques once you can do certain shading techniques we put the lining and the shading together once you can master that and get to the point where you can make a clean line and you can make an area of shading that goes from dark to light and it's extremely smooth without any stroke marks in it then you're pretty much ready to go on to the next step after this is learning how to saturate color learning how to make blacks black learning how to make your colors fully colored in and if you got to blend from a color to a color learning how to do that blending now all of this is done on paper once you have the hand technique and you know about pressure and you understand more about values and contrast then you will be finally ready to go into learning how to set your machines up and your willing canvas which needs to be yourself or a close friend of yours maybe can agree on a design and from there you would start tattooing on actual people underneath the guidance of a experienced artist like myself or one of my co-workers so it's very important that you come into this and take the artistic side of it very seriously a lot of the people that are out here tattooing are tattooing at a very base level and it will stay that way until they bring their artistic IQ up if you come into this with a very low IQ you have to be willing to take the time to build that IQ up to a certain level then translating over the tattoos will be much much easier for you now let's talk a little bit about the paperwork side of this before you can really start tattooing in a shop most states and counties are going to require that you have a bloodborne pathogen certificate now all this is is a certificate that you get from an online class that teaches you about bloodborne pathogens and teaches you how to keep you and your clients safe when you're dealing with blood and things of that nature so this is a very important certificate to have even if you are the home tattoo artist because having knowledge about bloodborne pathogens and contamination and how to keep things clean and how to keep things safe for you and your client is base knowledge that every artist should know first and foremost you're dealing with needles you're dealing with blood you're dealing with people's bodies it's very important that you're clean and that you follow proper procedures when it comes to setting up and breaking down your station so if you don't have guidance in this things can get pretty nasty when it comes to tattoos and a lot of people will tell you some horror stories but if you're going a traditional apprenticeship route the artist that you're learning under would have had to have did this a thousand times and they're going to teach you the very basics from the ground up it's very important that you pay attention to cleanliness and sanitation before you get off in to try to tattoo anybody so once you get your bloodborne pathogen certificate then you're going to have to get a body art permit to operate in whatever county you're in i have an oakland county body art permit i'm in michigan and that's what we got to do if you're in oakland county if you're in detroit you will have to get a wayne county wayne county body art permit so on and so forth um, most body art permits just require that you have a bloodborne pathogen certificate some of them might require you have some kind of CPR certification as well and a few dollars so a hundred bucks or so you'll get certified to work in whatever county you're in and the good thing about it is these certifications last forever once you get them they're there 
unlike your blood marked pathogen certificate, which has to be renewed once a year. So now you got your paperwork in order. You got some base artistic level skills going on. And hopefully you're dealing with an experienced artist. Now, from here on out, it depends on whatever artist you're working with. Some people will put their apprenticeships right on the floor and just allow them to take small tattoos and make money while they're still learning. Some will require you to do a few practice tattoos and get your skill level up to a base point before they even let you take any tattoo. In either case, you're going to have to be prepared to do a few tattoos before you really get to start making money. Now, with the guidance of a professional artist, you'll be building your skill level in no time if you're taking it seriously. Most of the artists who work here take it very seriously. They all started at one level and are doing great compared to how they came in. It's very important that you take this seriously. You're only going to get back what you put in. So if you're the type of person who just wants to come in and cherry pick and you're not putting any knowledge um, into what you're doing, you're not trying to learn new things, you're not trying to improve your skill level, it's going to show. You're going to end up just barely skating by and be one of these artists who are going to be forgotten in the next 10 or 15 years. So if you want to be somebody who makes a statement, you want to make sure your name lasts in the tattoo industry for years to come, if you want to leave a legacy, then the very most important thing that you're going to want to focus on is building your skill level up and building your knowledge about the tattoo industry in general and about art in general. It's not just about who can make clean lines and smooth shading. It's about who's the most artistic, who's the most creative and unique. And this goes to pretty much any industry that you're in now because uniqueness is something that is going to make you stand out amongst the competition. And it's going to make sure that you are going to be able to survive for years to come. This is something that takes time to develop as well. So if you're really serious about it, eventually you will end up developing your own personal artistic style and you will be somebody who stands out in the tattoo industry for years to come. That is the type of artist that I always try to build here at Bloodline Dynasty. We're very, very serious about our skill level, very serious about learning and taking that very, very seriously on a daily, daily basis. If you're not learning and moving forward, you're not doing shit and you're really not the type of artist that we fuck with. We only deal with people who are trying to make the best of themselves and you should be trying to do the same as well. All right, y'all. So let's do a quick recap over everything that we learned tonight. If you want to be a tattoo artist in general, you're going to go about it one of two ways. You're going to be a self-taught artist or you're going to go a traditional apprenticeship route. Now, being a self-taught artist might get you money quicker. But your learning curve is going to be a little bit slower because you're not going to have that guidance behind you telling you what to do and what not to do. Now, when you go the traditional apprenticeship route, you're not going to be able to make money as fast as the self-taught artist. But when you do start making money, your tattoos are going to be a lot more quality coming out the gate. And you're not going to have to worry about having two or three years in the hole when it comes to your skill level and knowing how to do things in the proper way. So... Whichever way you decide to go, at the end of the day, the most important thing that you want to stay focused on is your artistic IQ. Stay building your skill level. Stay learning how to be a better artist on a daily basis. And if you do this, when you get 10 years into the game, 15 years into the game, you're going to end up seeing a lot more progress than the person who just kept tattooing but didn't try to take any time out to learn any new skills and didn't really critique itself and figure out how to become a better artist on a daily basis. No matter how you cut it, building your skill level up and learning new things is going to be the key to you thriving and being the best tattoo artist that you can possibly be. So if you take these steps seriously and you move forward with confidence and if you take every day seriously and you learn as much as you can, about the industry one day you will be a professional tattoo artist for sure so i hope to see you one day and i hope this information really helps somebody make their first step toward being a professional tattoo artist and until next time good luck and
happy tattooing.